What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Layout and Stamps video for Anno 1800. Yet again, I have to apologize for the long delay in getting this video out to you all. The last couple of weeks have been extremely busy for me and I just have not had much time to do any recording. So this is the first weekend I have had. So let's jump in and get started with some Orno Lero. Oh, Orno Lero and Obrero layout and stamps for you guys. And again, these layouts and stamps are available on my Discord server. The link is down below and you can find them in the stamps and layouts channel as a zip file that you can download and toss into your documents folder. Just as a quick reminder, all of my stamps and layouts do not include DLC content. So no orchards for any farms, no silos, no tractor barns. However, for things like silos, tractor barns, things like that from Bright Harvest or the Seeds of Change, all of my uh, layouts that I present to you are modular and can be adapted to include those DLC content. Uh, things like orchards and stuff from the uh, tourist season DLC and high life and such, those will be included in later videos. So these are just vanilla only stamps and layouts, okay? So with that, let's get started. All right, the first one I have for you is one of our farm layouts right here. This is for the caoutchouc plantation, and that is how you pronounce that if you weren't familiar with that word. It is a caoutchouc or rubber. It's, it's, it's just rubber. That's all it is. It's rubber. So it's a very simple little layout with four caoutchouc fields around a warehouse. You have roads coming into it from all sides and a fairly nice, neat little square. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to achieve these squares like this or rectangles or wh whatever you want to call this. But I was able to get this one to go into a nice, neat little uh, shape right here for some caoutchouc. I actually like it enough that I'd probably use this even in my beauty building stuff. You know, just because it is, a, it's just a nice, simple little thing. I really like this right here. It's it's very pleasing to me. Now, I decided to skip doing a, just a plain old banana plantation layout. Uh, and instead, just decided to incorporate it with fried plantains. 99% uh, of the time, you're always going to have your fried plantain kitchens and your bananas on the same island. And it just makes sense to me to kind of incorporate it all together in one and not just have... You know, a massive banana plantation. Uh, but, you know, if, if you if you want to see one, I'm sure I could come up with a banana plantation only layout. But I figured this right here would be something simpler for anyone to use as a quick stamp for getting their fried plantains and bananas and stuff going right here. So two, uh, two of the factories, two of the farms. A, again, a nice little square, little layout right there with a warehouse in the middle. So, again, very simple, very nice and neat. And I like it. Now, I have two different poncho darner layouts for you. The first one right here is uh, four poncho darners and four alpaca farms. Now, if you're wanting to add silos to these alpaca farms, you can do it on the outside edge. That one tile right there counts. You can't go over here. The, the uh, buildings have to have at least 50% of their tiles covered within the radius of this. So this right here counts. Uh, that right there counts. Obviously, that right there will not because that's not 50% of the of the little add-on building. So you can get silos on this outside corner right here or the outside uh, bounding road if you want to. Has a little bit of extra space right here, a little bit of wasted space, but you know, it's it's not the end of the world. I don't I don't stress over that kind of stuff. And you can get electricity to uh, you know, your poncho darners and stuff if you have the um, New World Rising. So for the other one, I have this one. Now this one's a little bit funnier looking, okay? So it's a little funnier looking. Uh, we've got, again, four poncho darners, four uh, of the uh, livestock pastures right here. But these can be powered really easily on this outside road. That's why I did it this way. That way they can be powered up. And you've got a little extra space right here. You could put like a silo right there on for each or two of them. I think get some more silos on the outside edge if you have that DLC. But this allows all of your apaca farms to be powered up with the New World Rising DLC. That way you get the additional goods uh, for your artistas and all the stuff that they need. And again, these guys right here can be uh, powered up as well. So pretty handy little setup right there. Now for the Obreros, this is a custom made one that I did. Again, it's, if you're not familiar, a lot of the layouts I'm getting are just layouts from the wiki that I am transporting over into stamps for a lot of people because the wiki layouts are very popular. 
but this is one that I came up with, and you could tell that I came up with it because it has three tiles that I could not make into a nice perfect square. So if you want to try your hand at redoing the cotton field layouts to make them into a square, by all means, be my guest. I just don't have time to fool with it, but this is a layout right here that works for me. It gets everything you need for the Bombin Weaver. Uh, you got one felt producer, uh, one cotton mill, two cotton plantations, and a livestock pasture right here. Uh, again, plenty of room if you want to add tractor barns uh, onto the sides and stuff right here and get that on there. You could also add in fertilizer silos onto these things. So plenty of expansion uh, areas right here. And again, if you want to redo the fields, please go for it. I, I, I just couldn't sit there and figure out how to make it square. But, you know, I, I don't have all day to do that. But the layout right here works and it gets you everything you need in a little compact setup. Next up is everyone's favorite coffee. And again, this is another custom one that I did. You can tell because the tiles aren't even around the sides. Uh, but again, four coffee roasters, uh, eight uh, coffee plantations, all of them. Now, the only thing with this layout right here is it's not as easy to add on any... Um, like tractor barns and stuff if you want to then you just you'll have to move the farms and kind of move the the coffee plantations themselves out a little bit to give them some breathing room for fertilizer works and tractor barns if you have those dlcs if you don't have those dlcs then this right here will work perfectly fine and it will function but if, again if you want to add those bright harvest and seeds of change uh things into them you just have to do a little quick reconfiguring and just move you know, your farms and stuff out a little bit and reposition them some, but it's not a big deal. And last but not least, we do have the tortilla maker. We're going to have them burritos, uh, a single tortilla maker with two corn farms and two cattle farms right here on this tortilla maker. Nine times out of 10, though, you it, OK, if you're a smart player like like I am uh, <laughs> questionable, you won't uh, be using the cattle farms for the tortilla makers. You will instead be looking for this item right here. If I remember how to spell tortilla. <laughs> Here we go, tortilla maker. Uh, you'll be looking for, uh, where where is he at? Can't find him. Ah, that one right there, the mole master. Uh, you'll get the mole master. You can buy it. He's pretty cheap uh, buying it from a relatively cheap buying it from Isabel Sarmento and replace the need for beef with fish oil. So smart players go for the mole master. But if you uh, don't have access to that yet and you want to go ahead and start making your tortillas, this right here will work because you have your, your cattle farms. Again, add silos as needed on the outside edge. Your corn farms right here have good access to everything. It can be uh, expanded with tractor barns, fertilizer silos, and your tortilla maker can be can have electricity reaching it over here. Now, the next two stamps uh, were shown off in the last video with the artisan stuff, uh, but I'll go ahead and show them again real fast here. These are our cotton uh, cotton fabric stuff. We've got a single cotton mill with two plantations on it on this layout, and then this one right here has four. So it's got four, uh, four, plant, four mills and eight plantations. Again, these were in the artisan setup, but I will include them again with this one right here because it is a New World uh, production chain. So there are those two right there. All right. And just like with the cotton mills, these rum uh, distillery setups were shown off in the last video. However, I will show them again real quick and include them for those of you who did not get the artisan stamps. Uh, this one right here, two uh, rum distilleries along with the sugarcane plantations. Wood is not included in these because, you know, you just go set up your wood wherever you need it. And then down here we have a set of Four. So it's a two and a four setup right here for rum distilleries. All right, a chocolate factory setup. And this is actually one that I really like. And I actually just like the way it visually looks for some reason. Get your chocolate factory, two cocoa plantations, your sugar refinery, and a sugar cane plantation, and a warehouse in a nice, tidy little compact setup. Honestly, I always struggle with the cotton factory, uh, the cotton factory, my God, the chocolate factory setup. I always struggle with it for some reason. And I just absolutely love how this looks and works. It's just, it, it just works, as Todd Howard would say. It just works. 
And last but not least, we do have a cigar factory set up right here. Got your cigar factory, uh, two marquetry workshops, and four tobacco plantations to get the cigar factory up and running. Not the prettiest layout. The layout, this layout is actually from the wiki, except I did add in the marquetry workshops because it did not come with them. Now, arguably, you could remove the marquetry workshops and just stick them somewhere else, like in your city, if you wanted to. But just for the sake of an all-in-one, I decided to go ahead and add them in and reconfigure this ever so slightly to uh, to make this work. And th this is actually... Actually, I take it back. This whole thing is... Uh, I, I completely changed how this looked compared to the, uh, the one on the wiki. <laughs> Thinking about it now, I did completely change how this works. It looked completely different. I, I used it as a basis, and then I decided to add the marketry workshops, and I completely changed it up. Um, and again, you could tell because there's a row of there's a row of tobacco fields that are not part of the square. So yeah, be my guest trying to fix that. Have fun. Otherwise, I yeah don't have time to fool with that. But it works, and it, it's a decent little setup right here. All right, guys, and that is it. That is the Arnolero and Obrero production chains. Uh, for the new world that I wanted to show off in this video. Again, these stamps are available on my Discord server. If you want to grab those, they are in a zip file, and instructions on how to install all of that is also there. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask away. The Discord server is full of several thousand amazing people that are always there to, a to answer your questions and help you with anything related to Anno 1800. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care.